Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the video where we will discuss past year question for the year of 2022-2023. In this video, we will discuss question number 5 uh, involving chapter 6, chemical equilibrium. Okay, question 5. The equilibrium constant Kp for the reaction below is 8.3 exponent negative 3 at 400 degrees Celsius. We have 2 Cl2 gas plus 2 H2O gas. We form 4 HCl gas plus O2 gas given that delta H is positive 115 kilojoule per mole. Okay, question A. Calculate Kc for the reaction at 400 degrees Celsius. So, for chapter 6, so what is Kc? K stands for our equilibrium constant. C stands for concentration. Okay, so before we calculate Kc, we have to write down lah what is the Kc. For Kc, is only uh, applicable for gas and aqueous phase. Okay, and then for K, again, it will be product over reactant so based on this equation so what will be our k so kc will be hcl to the power of 4 multiply o2 divided by cl2 to the power of 2 multiplied by h2o to the power of 2 again for kc for gas and equal since all the species is gas so all is included lah and then since we have our number here or our stoichiometry then we have to write down to the power Okay, then we can calculate the Kc for the reaction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to extract information given based on the question. The information gives us the Kp which is 8.3 exponent negative 3 and temperature 400 degrees Celsius but they ask us for Kc. Kc stands for concentration. Usually we will substitute concentration lah. Okay, so concentration and molarity is the same thing. Uh, molarity is the same thing where the unit is molar okay but here we don't have any information about concentration what we have is kp they ask for kc so we have to use the formula which you have to memorize kp is equal to kc multiplied by rt to the power of delta n okay since we don't have any information about concentration we only have kp then we can use this one to find the kc okay so kp is given from the question kc is our unknown what is r r is our gas constant r is 0 0.08206 liter atm per mole per kelvin again you can refer this based on your list of constant um me personally i like to write the unit as well so that you know that for the other measurement what should be the unit lah okay so that is for r okay t stands for temperature temperature is given here but then again remember based on the r unit our temperature must be in kelvin so how do we change from degree celsius to kelvin we have to add to 73.15 Last but not least is the delta N. So what is delta N? Delta N is the mole product minus reactant. So how we know the mole? The mole here is based on the stoichiometric coefficient uh, based on our balance equation lah. Okay, for this case, again for delta N, we're going to um, include only for the element in gases phase. So for the mole product or for this equation, all of it is our uh, gas phase. So we're going to include all lah. So mole product is... 4 plus 1, here is 1, mole reactant is 2 plus 2, so it will be 5 minus 4, which will be equal to 1. Now we have all the information uh, for the calculation, then we can uh, substitute straight away all this value. Okay, it's just that remember, it must be R multiplied by T, uh, all of it will be our to the power of delta N. In this case, our delta N is equal to 1, so no problem lah, okay? So, you will get your Kc to be 1.5 exponent negative 4. Okay, so how do I know um, when to use this formula? Again, question asks for Kc. C stands for concentration where the unit will be in molar or mole per liter or it could be mole per dm cube. Since the question does not give any information about concentration, then we cannot substitute straight away lah. But the question did give us Kp. Then we have to use this formula. This one you have to memorize. Make sure R, if you don't remember, you must refer back to the list of constant. Delta N, product minus reactant, uh, must be only for gases phase. If, for example, this HCl is solid phase, uh, so this one will not be 5 dah lah. Kat sini, kalau this one is solid, this one will be 1 minus 4. Equal to negative 3. So that, that is what is meant by... Uh, delta N must be the gases phase. Okay, so that's for question 
A. Question B, explain the mass of HCl affected by increasing the temperature. Okay, so uh, this refer back to the Le Chatelier principle lah. Le Chatelier principle mentioned that if the system is in equilibrium, if there is the disturbance, the system will counter back lah. Okay, counter back the disturbance by try to reduce by try to reducing it. So, uh, in this case, uh, the disturbance for this question is by the temperature or specifically increase the temperature so now we have to explain what is the effect uh, specifically what will happen to the mass of hcl so for our syllabus mainly for the disturbance we're talking about the concentration temperature pressure we also have in it just lah but mostly for the question usually the question asks for this part okay so uh, the question asks uh, to explain by increasing te the temperature so first thing first from the question what I, what I would like to write down is okay so this one we're talking about temperature so we have to refer back to the delta h so there are two cases of delta h here so delta h uh, it could be positive value or it could be negative value so what is the importance of the delta h okay, it will tell us whether the endothermic or exothermic so for the endothermic reaction uh, this reaction is heat will be absorbed okay if the delta h is negative it will be an exothermic reaction where heat is released okay so why we have to mention here because from this equation Okay, when we're talking about temperature, we have to know which one has the heat lah. Okay, so heat absorbed, it means that the heat will be at the reactant. If heat release, it means that the heat will be at the product. The question is positive 115, which is our endothermic heat is absorbed. So first, what I need to write down is the where's the heat in this question. The heat will be at the uh, reactant side. Okay, so now we know that's the heat, so we have to know lah what will be the counterback of the um system itself. Okay, so by increasing the temperature, okay, so the, if the disturbance is increasing the temperature, okay, so the system will try to um, establish equilibrium back by, uh, they can counter back, uh, so the counter by uh, decreasing the temperature, so I have to write down in words lah. So here is the counter back, so once uh, the system is disturbed, by increasing temperature, it will counter by decreasing. So, in this case, we have to mention lah. Okay, the position to the equilibrium position to we shift to the right or shift to the left. Okay, so that's why it is important for you to know where's the heat. Okay, so by decreasing temperature. Okay, when we're talking about heat, okay, we're going to use uh, analogy. Okay, kalau ada heat ni, we use uh, tempat panas. Tempat panas lah buang je lah. So here we have uh, the heat place, we have love one, uh, tempat sejuk kita ambil kundasang. Uh, for example, okay. Uh, so how to know which one is the the heat one? Okay, the heat one, that's why we have to mention, uh, we have to know the delta H2. Exo ke endo. Tempat panas love one, tempat sejuk kundasang. Okay, so the system will try to decrease temperature. Okay, so bila de decrease temperature... Uh, dia nak pergi tempat sejuk lah It means that So tempat sejuk Case ni It will be on our right So You can't just write down It will shift to the right Okay so what does it mean By shift to the right tu Cannot lah Okay We have to mention that The equilibrium uh, Equilibrium arrow kita ni Equilibrium position I uh, will shift to the right If you only write down Shift shift ni Apa yang shift sebenarnya Okay So you have to write down Equilibrium position Shift to the right now we have mentioned it will shift to the right. So what does it mean is that our Cl2 and H2O gas, I will prefer to form HCl plus O2. Okay. Since the question um mentioned about explain. So when we're talking about explain, we have to mention the counter back, the equilibrium position and what will happen. Okay. So what will happen to the concentration? So since Cl2 and H2O uh, will form our HCl and O2. So it means that the concentration of reactant will decrease while the concentration of product will increase. Uh, so we have to mention or we have to explain about that lah. So this is the explanation if the question did uh, give us some disturbance lah. Uh, so explain. But then, based on the question itself, uh, it, was spe it specifically one mass of HCl. Okay, so before we know the mass of HCl, that's why we have to explain this three point first lah. Okay, so that uh, we know what's the next point. Okay, so when they ask you about mass of HCl, from here we have our concentration. Uh, this is HCl. We can see that the HCl increase. 
So what does it mean by this uh, square bracket? Square bracket means that this, that is our molarity or concentration. Okay, so the question asks for mass, we have molarity. So what's the formula that relate mass and molarity? Uh, it's actually, uh, you have to use another formula as well. Lah. Molarity is mole divided by volume. And the number of mole is mass divided by molar mass. Okay. So what happened? So since HCl concentration increase, okay, uh, this one, okay, again, molarity is mole over volume, mole mass over molar mass. Number of mole mass over molar mass here lah. So what's the relationship? So if the molarity increase, okay, assume that the volume does not change. Since we know that the, the volume does not change lah sebenarnya, this one constant je. Our V is constant, okay. So, uh, we can mention that since molarity increase, the mass bond will increase. So, that is what will happen to the mass of HCl. Again, if the question asks to explain, what you have to explain first is you have to mention about the counterback. Lah. Okay, counterback of the disturbance. Then you have to mention what uh, it will shift to the right or shift to the left. Okay, uh, and then we have to mention lah what will happen to the concentration for our species here. Okay, since the question specifically asks for mass of HCl, then we have to mention it from the uh, concentration of HCl itself. Okay, question C, predict the direction of the net direction if at one instant, concentration of Cl2, H2O, HCl and O2 measured are 0 0.7, 0 0.35, 0 0.25 and 0 0.05 molar respectively. Okay, so um, if the question asks you to predict the direction of the net direction, it means that uh, the direction, it could be to the right or to the left. Okay, so but then how do we know is it to the right or to the left? Then we have to find our Q. Okay, and then for Q ni, we're going to compare with our K. If Q is bigger than K, our net direction will, mu will move to the left. Okay. If Q is smaller than K, uh, our net direction will move to the right. Okay, so how do we know the direction? Uh, again, you compare Q and K and then you do the Pac-Man. Okay, uh, Pac-Man too, it will move towards the foot lah. Uh, contohnya kat sini, it will move to the left here. Uh, this one, if we have this one, uh, it will move to the right. Okay, okay so we have to compare Q and K. Okay, next, uh, I'm going to write down what is the information given from the question. We have all our concentration. Make sure label um, the correct concentration with the correct species. So, these are all information from the question. So, we can use this one to find our Q. Okay. So, for Q, we can find QC. We can also use QP. Okay, since the question given is concentration. Okay. So, uh, it will be more straightforward if I use QC. Okay. But then what is, if we have to find the QC, then we have to compare it with our KC. Okay. So, the question here, based on the question, we have our KP. KP is 8.3 exponent negative 3. But back to the question A, uh, we also have found our KC. Calculate KC. KC we have found... Uh, to be 1.5 exponent negative 4. Since we have our Kc, uh, then we can find our Qc lah. Uh, why do I use Qc? C stands for concentration and all the information given is concentration. So it will be more straightforward. If you want to find, uh, compare with Kp, no problem. Then you have to change from the concentration to pressure using the formula PV equal to nRT. But then if the question already give you the concentration then you can use the concentration straight away lah and then compare it with kc okay so how do i find my q how do i find my q is the same one as i find my k k must be in equilibrium so k at any instance lah at any instant will be our q but then how to write down the q the same as the k which is product over reactant again this one is qc so all of it must be guess or equals so, this will be my QC. So, as you can see, if I write down my KC, it will be the same one. 
Okay, so what what is the difference? K means that the system must be in equilibrium. If Q, it means at any instant lah, it could be at equilibrium boleh. Uh, but mostly Q ni is not in equilibrium lah. Okay, so next what we have to do is just we will substitute all the value into the formula. Make sure you substitute the correct one. HCl here, O2 here, Cl2 here and H2O here. Okay, once we have substitute the value, you will get your Kc your QC to be 3.25 exponent negative 4. Okay, so if you only answer until this, you haven't answered the question yet. The question asks, predict the direction. So now we have done the first step, which is uh, find your Q. So next step is actually compare your Q with your K. Okay, uh, your Q must be written first. So in this case, we're going to compare our QC and KC. Okay, once you compare and you write down the value, you can see that it has the same exponent lah, negative 4, negative 4. Then we refer back to the number at the front. So here we have 3.25, here we got 1.5. So our Q is bigger than our K. Okay, so first what we have to write is that we have mentioned if it's not equal, then the reaction is not in equilibrium. So next part is that we have to mention lah, uh, the direction of the reaction will proceed to which um, direction? Will it move to the right or we move to the left? Okay, so that's why this one we have to compare Q first and K. Then we do the Pac-Man. Uh, we know that it will uh, move to the left. Then we mentioned that the net reaction will proceed to the left. Okay, so why does we mention net reaction? Yeah. Okay, net direction. Uh, if you only want to write down the reaction ataupun the direction will proceed pun okay juga. Okay, uh, so the reaction will proceed to the left. Okay, why once we do the Pac-Man, we compare, we can see the Pac-Man where it will move. Okay, so if the question asks predict the direction, so direction 2 is either to your do to your right or to your left. But how, how do we compare it? We have to compare Q and K. K usually it will be given in the question lah. So, but this one you have to compare first. Okay, Q is um, at any time. Here I mentioned at any instant. Uh, tak semestinya equilibrium lah. Usually it's not in equilibrium. Okay. So we have to mention uh, first it's not in equilibrium. Then where will it proceed to uh, achieve equilibrium too? Okay. So if uh, this one is not in equilibrium. So when will it be that the uh, reaction is in equilibrium? If Q is equal to K. Uh, so usually predict direction ni uh, usually either to your right or to the left. So that is all for question number 5 for the year of 2020 to 23.